Hey, hello everyone. So the topic of my talk is robust IRC or IRC without net splits. And for those of you who don't know, IRC is sort of like Slack, but with a different set of bugs. <laughs> so the motivation for us to start this project is that to this day, we haven't found a good alternative to IRC, for us, that is. And the biggest problem that we had with IRC is its lack of stability. So on the slide here, you can see a very tiny diagram of how an IRC network could look like. And what stands out is that all of the clients use TCP connections to talk to the server, and the servers themselves are networked using TCP connections. Now, the problem with IRC is that if any individual TCP connection of all of these connections die, then uh, you have what's called a net split, right? So in the case of a client-to-server connection, that means that the client can no longer participate in the chat session. But in case of a TCP connection between servers, that means all of the clients which were connected to one server now cannot participate any longer. Now, this places a perverse incentive on the maintainers of IRC networks, because now they can no longer do things like routine software updates, reboots, network maintenance, or anything like that without disrupting the IRC network. So we thought, how could we solve this? And for the server-to-server -server use case, we looked at fault-tolerant databases, and we figured we could do the same thing. So we built an IRC network as a distributed system using the Raft uh, library. And for the client-to-server case, we invented a tunnel protocol to gloss over the TCP disconnects. So let's look at how this works. For the servers, we have a number of robust IRC servers which make up one virtual IRC server. At any given point in time, the minority of these servers can fail. So if you have a network that consists of three servers, then one of them can fail or can be taken down. And if you have five servers, two of them can fail, and so on. For the tunnel protocol, we came up with what we call the robust session protocol. And it is based on HTTP and JSON, because these are widely available technologies for anyone to easily implement. We have a program called the bridge, which will tunnel IRC over this robust session protocol. So you can keep using your favorite IRC client, your bots, your uh, proxies, what have you. Right. The processing model that we implemented is that incoming IRC commands are persisted using Raft. So Raft is responsible for distributing the IRC commands across all of our servers. And once consensus is established, the message is processed. The servers themselves are hence implemented as state machines, which means that after the process restarts for whatever reason, be it because you accidentally killed it, because you installed a new version, or because your machine died and you needed to swap the power supply, as soon as the server comes back up, it will reach the same state that all of the other servers have. So that means that a client can easily resume reading upon a TCP disconnect from any other server uh, by just failing over and then getting the message stream from that point on. The fine print is that the lower bound on the IRC latency is now the median latency between all of the servers. In practice, however, this latency is well below 50 milliseconds, so it's typically not an issue that you could even perceive. Also, if you want to build a truly robust network, and chances are you want to do that if you run a thing called robust IRC, then you need at least three different failure domains. So it's not going to work if you have one individual rack and you place all of your three nodes in there, and then you lose power or network to that rack. So how can you participate in such a network? You can set up the bridge, as I mentioned, using the commands that I have on the slide here. As you can see, it's just one go get, and then you just run it and point it to the network that you want to join. Afterwards, you connect your IRC client to localhost. The bridge compiles with Go version 1, and we regularly test this. So even if you have like an old server in your basement running Debian old, old stable, you could still install the bridge and use it. If, however, for whichever reason, installing the bridge is not feasible for you, you can also use a bridge that we run at legacyirc.robustirc.net. However, if you choose to use the bridge that we run, you will still not see any network splits when we do regular server maintenance, but you will still be using a TCP connection. So when you disconnect from that bridge, you're still out. So it would be better if you ran a bridge on the computer on which your IRC client runs. So now that you know what we do, let me explain a little bit how we do it. For monitoring and alerting, robust IRC is instrumented using native Prometheus metrics. We also ship a Prometheus alerting rules file and a Grafana dashboard definition. 
the rules file follows the Google S3 book's best practices. And if you haven't checked that out, it's a great resource. And the link is on the slides, which I'll publish afterwards. So please go take a look. Now, when you change the code, you want to verify that your change is actually correct. And one way to do that, obviously, is to run the unit test, which we have. But you can go one step further, and you can test with live data. So you could either set up a test network, or you could use a live network. And then you take a snapshot, and you run the robust RC Canary tool. What that tool does is it processes the snapshot using the old version and the new version of robust RC. And then it generates an HTML diff of the results, so that you can convince yourself that the change that you implemented actually has the effects that you expect. Once you have the change done and uh, committed, you would usually want to push it out to the network. And in order to do that, we have another tool called RobustRC Rolling Restart. This tool will check the health of the network at every step of the way, and then proceeds to remotely restart one server at a time, which is something that the network can handle. Whenever a server is restarted, um, the updates are pulled in, and we do that using a systemd service file directive, which I have here on the slide, which just uses Docker pull. Um, so the way we distribute our software is by using Docker, and whenever a server goes down, it first checks for update before it comes back up. Now, assuming you have landed your change, uh, before we actually cut a new release of RobustRC, we run a load test. And we have another tool for this called RobustRC Load Test. What it does is it starts a Kubernetes deployment on Google Cloud, which is nice because it's a reproducible environment and you don't need any own hardware to set it up. Then it goes on and sends traffic to the deployment until the rates converge. It then does a snapshot of the Grafana dashboard, which I mentioned earlier. And I have just one panel of that dashboard here on the slide. As you can see, in terms of committed messages per second, RobustRC currently reaches well above 2,000 messages per second, which is enough for even the largest public IRC networks out there. With regards to maturity, we are running a production network for well over two and a half years at this point. In the first half a year or so, we found a couple of bugs. But in the two years following, we haven't found any others, so fingers crossed. All of the common operations, such as node startup, taking snapshots, et cetera, et cetera, are optimized to the point where they complete in way less than a split second. And in fact, the resource usage is so low that if you wanted to, you could run an entire robust RC network with nothing but a couple of Raspberry Pis. The distributed system testing framework Jepson comes with a passing robust RC test, which is not very surprising because we are using the HashiCorp Raft library under the covers, which also powers tools such as Console, Nomad, and others. So that's the end of the slides, but I have a live demo, and we have enough time to run through it real quick. Um, so let me switch here and show you what I call the robust RC local net, which is a tool to just bring up a robust RC network on your computer. So now I'm going to use uh, an RC client, a terminal RC client, and I'm going to join a channel. And I'm going to just write hello. So far, so good. There's only one user in here, um, so that's not very exciting. However, um, if I have another user in here, um, I can write hey. And then eventually, once the RC client syncs the channel, uh, you'll see that message pop up up here. So now, what's uh, more interesting about robust RC is uh, demonstrating that it actually is robust, right? Um, so I'm going to um, prepare this here uh, by going into, actually, let me do it another way. So first of all, I'm going to kill all of the robust RC processes. Um, now the network is frozen, in a sense. It cannot make any progress. And now I'm going to say um, robust RC restart, which will bring the nodes back up. Um, but I'm going to write hello. And you can see that the message does not go through, right? Um, so now I've restarted the nodes, and they will synchronize. Um, actually, sorry, let me pull up uh, the status panel right here. OK, there we go. So this is the web interface. And uh, we can check all of the state of the servers. Uh, it's uh, serialized here as a protobuf. You can also, if you so choose, look into the raft messages that are exchanged in the network. You can look at the sessions, et cetera. Um, and uh, eventually, the message will appear. You've just seen it pop up right here. Um, so as long as your outage is short enough, uh, you will, as a user of the network, not even see that anything has happened. All right, um, so that was that. If you want to learn more about RobustIRC, check out our website at robustirc.net. Uh, we have some documentation on there, also an admin guide if you want to set it up and play around with it. There is a 40-minute tech talk if you want to hear me talk more. Um, and if you have any other questions, please come find me afterwards. Thank you so much. <laughs>